Hello, my name is Rudolf John Horak. I go by Rudy. I am a simulator technician here in Miami. I work for Airbus. I spent uh, 20 years working for the United States Air Force. Uh, four years of that was around aircraft. The rest of it was around computers and telecommunication systems. So after completing 20 years in the Air Force, I uh, decided to be a simulator technician. And now uh, for the last five years, I've been here in Miami working for Airbus. I maintain uh, simulators uh, that train pilots uh, to make sure to prepare them for real life situations. We can recreate virtually anything that can happen in the air uh, safely simulated in our uh, simulators. I always liked aircraft. Um, I always had a fascination with flight uh, ever since I flew over uh, from the Czech Republic with the uh, Czech Airlines with the uh, Russian IL-62M. Uh, that was my first fascination with flight. Uh, later on, when I was a little kid, around, uh, we were walking around the terminals back then, you could go up to the gates. And I remember bothering my mom, and I was asking her how, uh, how airplanes turn. And my mom pointed the first thing she saw, which was a pilot, uh, a Pan Am pilot. And Pan Am pilots were always a little bit more, they walked a little taller than everybody else. And they were, uh, they were pretty awesome. Uh, and the guy actually sat down with me, he spent about 20 minutes talking to me about aircraft and how an airplane turns and took me up to the window and he showed me all this stuff. And uh, that's uh, when I got bit by the aviation bug. And once bitten, uh, there's no known cure. I uh, started, I always loved fascination flight, but my math skills were always terrible. So uh, I did the next thing, which was getting involved in the Air Force. Um, so when you go into the American Air Force, you get to pick your jobs. Uh, and the job I picked was uh, Aircraft uh, was called uh, Aircraft Armament Systems. So this is uh, an aircraft uh, armament systems, which includes uh, missiles and bombs and some basic uh, functions of the aircraft. We test all variations of the systems. I also got to learn how to do all kinds of cool stuff, like I learned how to be a brake rider and other things on the airplane. So after uh, 20 years in the Air Force, I love being around aircraft. That's always been my favorite thing. So yeah, I wanted to stay around airplanes and my math skills are terrible. So I wouldn't look. I, uh, what I used to do is I used to buy simulator flight time. I did some stuff in Prague, uh, did some stuff in England, and I did all these various things where I would uh, rent a simulator and uh, an instructor, and I would pay to do basic takeoffs and landings. And it was a lot of fun, but I wanted to see if I could turn this into a career. So I found this friend of mine who works in Las Vegas. Uh, he used to work in, for Eastern Airlines, and um, he started showing me around the simulator. I learned the basics of flight. I learned how to fly an MD-80 and a 737. And when I did this, uh, I wanted to see what kind of jobs were in this. So I figured out that uh, this is simulation, a uh, very small career field. And like I said, after leaving the Air Force 20 years, I wanted to do something around aircraft. So what I did is I went to the one place where nobody goes, which is actually in North Dakota, a near close to Minot Air Force Base between Minot and uh, Dead Center is a place called Devil's Lake, which is actually the only simulator maintenance school that's existing in the US that takes you from nothing to a full-blown train sim tech. I'm one of the uh, one of 11 simulator technicians that works for Airbus. Um, my day-to-day -day job is to make sure that our pilots get the proper training. So if something should happen in the airplane in the air, uh, they'd be ready for it using muscle memory and other things. So they're prepared to uh, work the situation. Uh, anything from engine failures, engine fires. In our training center, we can duplicate most any uh, any situation that could happen in the air. We can train the pilot to be prepared for that situation should it ever occur in their uh, daily jobs. 
So as a simulator technician, my job is to maintain the simulator and keep it operating throughout the day. Uh, the front of the aircraft is just like the real thing. It has projections, it has motion, and pilot looking forward will feel like they're inside the real aircraft. Uh, we can duplicate almost anything that could happen out there uh, from the instructor, the what's called the IOS, the instructor operating stations. The front of the airplane looks just the same as the real aircraft, but the instructor operating station can be different based on the manufacturer who made that simulator. So the instructor may not know, for example, how to make it rain, how to make it snow, how do you uh, perform a certain function, how do you restore a flight plan, and different uh, things like that. So that's when my job comes in. I help out with that. I also, if the simulator should break, I try to repair it and get it back to working status as soon as possible. If that can't happen, uh, then we move them to a different simulator and we work on that simulator and get it up back to running operating. Uh, the afternoon shift usually takes care of things such as the QTGs. These are uh, tests that each simulator goes through to prove that the simulator is actually simulating things correctly and that it's working well within the operation limits. The midshift then uh, does heavy duty maintenance. Uh, a lot of things that they need to be done on the simulator to make sure that it performs. Anything that got broken throughout the day, it gets repaired, the simulator is down, they will definitely work on getting it back up. And then there's the fun part. Uh, you actually get to fly the simulator to make sure that everything works the way it's supposed to and be ready for the next operational day. The simulator actually has several parts. There is the motion side, which is the whole simulator sits on these gigantic hydraulic legs and they move the simulator and with your eyes and ears, uh, just a slight motion to the left or right will actually get you the feeling that you're actually turning, uh, braking, climbing and other functions. To that, there's also three projectors on top of the simulator, uh, two, one going straight, left projector going to the right, right projector going to the left. And together they make up a 180 degree, around 180 degree image that's projected on uh, mylar. Uh, it's like a, kind of like the party balloon material. Uh, that material is uh, suction to become a straight curvy picture. And with this curve, you, uh, you get a 180 degree picture of what's going on. So you can see outside your window, you can see outside the side window, and you can see outside the other pilot's window as well. So with the motion, the visual, and what's going on inside, because inside it's like the real cockpit, will give you an exactly feeling like you're flying the real airplane. Uh, when you're climbing, the simulator banks back and shakes slightly, give it a bit of a climb. When you're braking, the simulator will tilt forward. That gives you the sensation that you're coming to a stop, just like in a car. And together with these systems, uh, technology is always improving. There's always something different about these simulators. Uh, one thing that's kind of different on our simulators is uh, you're flying alone. Uh, there's no other aircraft at the airport. Uh, you can do things like uh, simulate uh, traffic around you. You can simulate uh, the TCAS system, which is the traffic collision system, which we tell the airplanes that are coming at each other what to do, how to avoid uh, striking each other. This is all systems that we can simulate uh, in, our, in our simulations. For the following topic, I have to say that these are my own opinions, not the opinions of Airbus or the United States Air Force. So here's the thing, you know, we've been flying for a little bit over hundred years. We've seen some great developments going from the propeller to the jet engine and beyond. We're flying faster and higher. Sometimes we take a few steps backwards, but you know, technology is changing and this is what I was asked about my opinion on what I think of where we're going with this. So in an Airbus, uh, if you turn the stick to the side, the Airbus will go to a maximum angle and the computer will start screaming bank angle, bank angle, bank angle. On a 737, you can actually take the yoke and turn it and it will actually do a barrel roll completely upside down. Um, both technologies are really good. Uh, I like the technology on Airbus that has what's called a dark uh, cockpit. So anything overhead, if there's no lights, that means everything is good and as it should be without any emergencies. 
Uh, if light comes on, then that means that's a problem, and it'll directly pilot to that button and see what the issue is. So as far as automation is concerned, um, I think it's the best of both worlds, but I still think that uh, stick and rudder skills definitely need to be there for the pilot. I think that with the modern day technology, some of the basic stick and rudder skills are fading. And as long as the computer's functioning normally, you know, it's great. It's when the computer isn't functioning normally when things happen. And uh, that's definitely a challenge for the future of, you know, aviation altogether. As more and more things go up there, I mean, there, we're talking about now a future could be pilotless aircraft where the pilot be replaced by a sensor operator is one of the theories. And um, I still definitely believe that you need to have a pilot in a pilot seat to fly the airplane. Military simulations and civilian simulations are vastly different. Uh, for the most part, uh, a lot of the fighter jets are single pilot operation, whereas to most civilian aircraft, there's always two pilots. And uh, where it all comes together is probably cargo operations, and in some cases, bomber operations where there's a crew of two. Uh, this leads to the two crews working together as a team versus the one pilot being by himself, having to do all the tasks on his own or her own. Uh, on the military side, and I never had a chance to fully work that from what I've been told, what they usually do is they can have a mission planning so you can see your player, just like a multiplayer, uh, something similar to like Microsoft Flight Simulator or DCS World. So a lot of the customers that we have, some of the customers are very beginners and some of the customers are well versed in their different uh, formats. So when a, a pilot comes in and they get transferred to a new aircraft that requires different training, I uh, think it's really, really complicated as to what type of training they receive. But once all together, they can actually uh, learn to fly their new aircraft. Well, there's a lot of differences. Uh, like I said, uh, simulator maintenance used to be part of uh, military a long time ago. Uh, this got changed into... So we're standing in front of a beautiful P-38 replica, Lightning II. You know, uh, being in the military, seeing stuff like this really gets me kind of a few stories that, you know, 20 years will bring in. So uh, my job was driving the bus, taking all our guys into work. This is an American type school bus. And uh, what would happen is I had to have my line badge. So that was my credentials to get me on the flight line. Well, this is always comical because what would happen is I would hang my light badge, I would, my line badge on the door, on the door handle. So as I was driving up, someone took my line badge. And as I'm approaching the security gate, I said, I need, really need this line badge back. If I don't get this back, we're gonna be uh, on the ground. So um, as I'm getting closer and closer, I see my badge, it's getting passed down to me. And when I get my hand on it, it's got a mustache. They took a little black marker and colored me, gave me a black eyes and a mustache and a beard. So I'm in front of the security guard and I'm trying to smudge it as I'm handing it over. And he's uh, he's not least impressed. Uh, they get on the bus and one of the guys said, oh, my ID card's expired. That person got removed from the bus and we had another work day. <laughs> it's all in good times, all in good humor.